Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Hopefully, it's welcome back to USA Global TV and radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I'm the president, founder, and chief listening officer here at our network, where we are 29 live broadcast strong each and every week. I have to smile to myself because on one of my other computers here, we have the YouTube channel up and we've got a commercial that is coming on our show before it, we're actually live, I guess. And it's Mariska Hardigay and Law and & Order and a special show that they have. So that warms my heart because I'm a huge Law & Order fan. And to know that that advertisement is going on this show is pretty cool. So what is our show today? It's the amazing adventures of Lady Ella, the listening mentor. And for those of you who are not aware of who Lady Ella is or what's the purpose of this book. Lady Ella is my great niece. Her name is Ella. And she just celebrated her first birthday last week. And sadly, I couldn't be there, but the pictures look like amazing. She's so smart and sweet. And anyway, the book focuses on how to teach children elevated listening skills. And so our program is all about understanding who are the characters in the book. And they actually are animals. And each animal, as you see on the cover here, represents a human being, someone who has taken the time and invested the money to take the power of listening course and become a certified elevated listener. And so each of these individuals are interested in helping people learn how to listen at an elevated level, especially children. So joining me today, playing the character of Abu, which is the Black Panther you see on the cover, is Mr. Roland Friedel. Let's welcome him to the program. Hello. Hello, Dr. Jacqueline. Great to see you again. Nice to see you too. So for folks who don't know, you are a co-host here on several shows, another one that's about to start, which we'll have a chat about. You're also one of our expert presenters on Talking Heads. You're obviously an elevated listener, but you have a whole life outside of this and you are actually traveling in your motorhome through Europe and you're leading a training for one of the world's largest corporations. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone, wherever you're joining us um, on a TV station, social media, on radio. My name is Roland. I'm originally from Austria, a small little country in the middle of Europe. And yeah, my, my passion is traveling and connect with people. That's what I always have done the last, I don't know, 50 years. Actually, yesterday I became 58. So yeah, almost 50 years. I remember I was my first trip to Italy was when I was six years old. So 52 years traveling. And I, I just love it. And yeah, what's my background? You know, university, I was studying different uh, topics. Uh, my main topic was uh, international business, but I also studied German philology. History. I was interested in that. Uh, Spanish philology and South American culture. And yeah, normal career, you know. Um, I started the corporate world, had a very, very fast career. I was, I guess, the youngest member of board of director of a, of a huge company in Austria. Left me because I was not happy. Um, I was happy with the job. The job was cool. The payment, the check was amazing. No, no doubt on that. Uh, all the contacts I got, amazing too. But to be honest, I don't know how it's in the US or in everywhere you're um, watching from or listening to from is in Austria, you have five weeks of vacation. And that's not enough for traveling when you love traveling. So I decided to leave the corporate world, not my own business. Uh, and in the beginning, my idea was building up an international business that I can manage and work from wherever I'm just, wherever I am, where I'm living. Because my slogan is, the world is my office, the world is my home. So uh, we, 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 meaning myself and my team, actually we speak eight or nine languages, I'm not quite sure, but I can check it out on the website. We consult, coach, train, and spare. On the other hand, like Dr. Checklist said, big international companies. I was running a workshop last year. We continued this, uh, sorry, last week, sorry. And this week, actually this morning, um, 
I said this morning because I'm I'm, I'm broadcasting from Europe. It's my, where I am now. It's it's 7 p.m. afternoon in the evening. So I was delivering a workshop online uh, for a big company. Uh, I do consulting and training for executive managers worldwide. I just like it. That, that's what I love. I'm, I'm very mission driven to support uh, this organization's businesses, but also a small business like like startup. Yeah? It's not it's not only international companies. It's also uh, small startups that just started and, and they need help. And um, it's a pleasure for me and an honor to support them too and give them structure and processes while they are growing and selling their products and services. That's my main income, to be honest. And besides that, I dedicated my life to men's work. I run men's group. Actually, I do a, an amazing show with absolute love. Every Wednesday on USA Global to Video, Wild at Heart, a show by men, for men, about men every Wednesday. And yeah, besides that, I focus very, very much on Mother Earth and the planet uh, where I live, especially when you travel, you see so much beauty, beautiful places. I was at paradise. You also see a lot of uh, environmental disasters, rubbish and, and destruction. You, uh, you see both. And so I decided years ago uh, to start a foundation called Respect Mother Earth. And we will also do coming up soon a show here on USA Global Development Radio. The Earth Show, coming soon. Stay tuned. That's that's about me. <laughs> Roland, I love it. I'm actually okay. laughing back here. The next thing I need for you to do is to learn how to produce the show so I can take a few hours off each week. <laughs> 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 and you'll be great at that. So thanks for sharing all of that. I, I really want to dig into your work as well as our topic for today. So let's just spend a few more minutes about your work. Is there, uh, let me ask this, what are, if any, the differences when you're leading a global or international team through a training as opposed to being face to face with people in a in a classroom or a workshop in person you mean what's the difference in online class to class yeah so in other words you're you're leading this training for uh, an international organization but you're not meeting in person as opposed to being in a classroom where you have people right in front of you you're online. So what is that like? Well, to be honest, to be honest I, I miss, what I really miss is to meet the people live analog in a classroom because there's more energy. Actually, I love to move around when I talk, when I teach. Um, I'm very active, uh, very, very active. I love to connect with people. Uh, what I what I don't miss is is the traveling part, <laughs> you know, airplanes, delays, cancellation, stuff like that. So that are uh, beautiful five star hotels, but um, yeah, but it's lonely in hotels. That's what I don't miss. I, I miss to meet the people live, meaning analog in a classroom. But I, what I absolutely don't miss is the traveling because I was uh, facilitating, except Australia, in every in every on every continent in different languages. Uh, in, a, in a virtual classroom, when, what I do in a virtual classroom, we, we, we do the classes shorter because people cannot focus online in front of a computer. They're not moving, they're sitting like myself. They cannot focus for six, seven, eight hours. So we do shorter sections. Uh, yeah, and, and honest, um, after three hours in front of a screen, I'm more exhausted than moving around, acting eight hours in a classroom. But... I, but the feedback for the client is, yeah, they miss the personal contact because it's not only that they, I don't know if they miss me, but of course they miss the colleagues, that they miss the contact with the personal, uh, the personal contact with their colleagues. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, to be honest, I just love to work remotely, meaning I love to work virtually because it gives me the opportunity right now uh, to lift a, 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 a dream. You know, I was always traveling uh, many, many times, um, you know, Jacqueline, Mallorca, this beautiful island in, in Spain, has been my, my home base for the last 14 years. And now, actually five, almost six months ago, I moved into my motorhome and travel around Europe. And uh, yeah, I think 90% of the workshops, trainings uh, we facilitate is online. And the other things, uh, 10%, I park my motorhome close to an airport and I fly to my clients. But to be honest, I love this chance to work remotely and from beautiful places like right now i i just left Sp uh, france i come here uh, i spent the last six six and a half weeks in Sp in, in in france now i came uh, I'm, I'm here in, in spain in sebastian beautiful i've been here the last time when i was a, stu a student yeah after my university 
uh, three years ago. So for me, it's just perfect. For me, it's just perfect. Uh, working online, like here at USA Global TV, working online, uh, you're, in the, you're, you're based in the US. Uh, I'm here in Spain right now. The audience is following us from all, the whole globe. Uh, it's just fantastic what technology offers us. It's just fantastic. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that, Roland. And I can definitely relate because when I was in my corporate career up until March 6th of 2020, I traveled all over and I loved it. I love staying at the five star resorts. I love the food, but I would be exhausted when I would come back. And now I haven't gone anywhere except from Florida to New Jersey, New Jersey to Florida. And I just love what we're doing because you don't have to travel. Because if I were trying to go and see you and go see Diane and go, like if everyone who's on our platform, it's not possible. I wouldn't be able to get any of the shows done. I couldn't get any work done. So I do think that this technology is a true gift. So I'm grateful that you're here and you're able to find a way to connect with us regardless of where you are. And we spoke recently about you writing a book. I really feel there's a second book for you, which is your travels while you've been in your motorhome. I mean, I don't know if you're taking pictures of what you're seeing and the places that you're going, or maybe you can start, but that would make for a great coffee book table, or even for a business book that, you know, you, you can travel the world and still earn an income like what you're doing. Well, actually, you know, I'm just writing a business book uh, about the topics that I deliver in the Talking Head show every, every Tuesday. Uh, but when I finish this, yes, I will write a book about, for people who are interested in in working remotely and traveling. So a combination of working remotely and, and, and traveling. Uh, actually, my, my, my target group is not young digital nomads. There are many outside, outside. So just people in my age, you know, uh, who, I don't know, mid forties, mid fifties, who say, uh, who, yeah, experienced the last two years, the pandemics and all the challenges. And I think, oh, was this everything in my life? Maybe I should start a second career or a different career and this will be the targeted group yeah, about wireless life rocks. Absolutely. It's coming. It's coming. All right. I'm excited to hear about that. That's great. All Thank right. You. I want to segue over to the book for a moment. So on the book cover, you see our audience that there are animals on one side of a fence and a cow on the other side of a fence. You also see an owl in a tree and you see a ladybug sort of hovering in the middle. And I spoke with Roland briefly before the show began. And just the fact that this book cover actually mirrors life with people, how there is a fence, whether it's really there or we put it there and how we make judgments about who's on the other side of the fence or who's on that side of the fence with us. They look different than us. They're acting differently. They're dressed differently. So Roland, what can you share about when you look at the book cover and really make an analogy to life as a human? Yeah, first of all, I love the book, you know, because um, um, it's important that we educate uh, children in a very early stage about communication and, and a huge part of communication, a very important part of communication, in my opinion, is listening. Uh, listening to understand the other person. To understand what's going on on the other side of, of the fence, what's going on with the other person. Um, that I think this is so so important that we, yeah, that we that we, we just start communicating. And, and the point is that, I man, I experienced myself. You know, when when you when you grow up, you see somebody, and it's, it's always very easy to charge. It's very very easy to charge about another person what he or she is doing what he or she did, what he or she is saying, what he or she did, or stuff like that. It's very, very easy to, to try, especially when we, when, when the other person is different than ourselves. Maybe speaking a different language, maybe have a different cultural background or religion or whatever it is. And so it, I guess it's also important that we that we learn not to charge, to give up charging, in, more in, in, in observing and and getting connected getting connected to, uh, to the other person and learn from the other person but just listening and understanding this is so so so, so important and i have a story you know um I, many many years ago i i, I attended a four-year program because you know i was always consulting coaching people uh besides my other businesses i was running 
And I said, okay, maybe learn a little bit more about the mythology. I know I was sure about the content I can deliver because I have a lot of experience in different fields, but I was, wanted to learn about more uh, mythologies for coaches and training. So I attended, a, it was a four year program. And I guess we've been about a hundred people or something like that. You know, when a, when a group is like, has a science like this, and you always stick together, then you don't talk to a hundred people. That's that's impossible. So always you always uh, come together in a small group. You know, you, the, the person you like, the person it, maybe it's attractive or sympathetic, whatever. So it, you always hang around in the breaks, in the coffee breaks, uh, with the same people. And this uh, and the trainer, the, the head trainer of, of this program, uh, I guess it was the um, third module. He he said, "Hey guys, you always stick together in, in the same small groups. Uh, maybe we should do an exercise." And in the next break, uh, the next coffee break, I challenge you and you go with somebody you never have spoken before the last, I don't know, two years or more than three years, yeah, last two years. So just approach a different person you, that is also here in the room since two years, it's also attended the program, but you never ever spoke to this person for, for whatever reason. So next coffee break, I'm a little bit excited, you know, because uh, we, lo we love, we love routine, always do the same stuff. Um, but I learned about challenging myself, changing stuff. Now, now I love it. I love change now. But it was not in the beginning, to be honest. So I was targeting, um, sorry, ladies. I was targeting a small lady. I, maybe she was not tall enough for her weight, like a, uh, <laughs> this guy like this. She was not my target group like that. And she was targeting me. It was, it was interesting. I, I was targeting her. She was targeting me. So we came together. We, 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 we took a coffee for the coffee machine and started a conversation. And yeah, you know, breaking down all the boundaries, all the judgments, all the boxes we had in, in, in our head. And she said to me, Ron, I would, if this wouldn't be the exercise, I would never talk to you because, you know, you're a handsome guy, you attract other ladies, or some people think you're arrogant because you're quite cool in the room. And I, I said to her, honestly, you know, uh, I would never tell you before. And I was so happy to be, make a, a long story short. Uh, we became very good, very good friends. Uh, I was many, many times visiting her and her family at her home. She came uh, with her husband and her kids to my home in Mallorca. It was an amazing uh, friendship started. And it would never happen if I wouldn't stop judging. So I always say, hey, guys, stay open. You never know who, who you miss or what opportunity you're missing when you charge. It's so, so important to... Yeah, to stay open, to stay open, to connect with everyone. And, and, and since this, to be honest, I'm so curious to meet other people, especially people who are not the same like myself, yeah, who are different. Uh, I want to learn from people who are different than me, who maybe have a different religion, a different culture, maybe a, a, diff a different political point of view, whatever it is, I want to learn from them. Doesn't mean that I agree with everything. Doesn't mean that. But maybe it, it, it helps me to understand the other side better. And it also gives me a chance to rethink about my thinking. Is it really right what I'm thinking? Maybe I change my opinion. So I just love it. I just love it. Stay open and not charging anymore. That's a great story. Thank you so much for sharing that. There's a lot to be learned about that. And, and something that I'll add to it is, you know, on this network here, I meet people all the time. Some people are very agreeable fairly agreeable and then some people are kind of i don't want to say difficult but they have a different approach instead of just going with the flow they have their own interpretation and i found very early on that the people who give me a hard time are usually the people i'm going to end up getting along with really well because they challenge me to think they challenge me to to question the the normal the normalcy whatever it is so i am am open to meeting new people. And I'm curious about how people live and how they think and why they do what they do. And it's amazing to me that there are so many people who are not interested in this. They've always lived in the same town with the same people doing the same type of things. And that's okay. But to me, I think I've moved, I want to say 14 times since I got divorced. I don't even remember. And I'll move again. You know, I'm about to move again. I just, I don't know. I just love it. I, I feel like I'm, I'm happy wherever I am. I'm, I make the best of it and I look for all the positives. Absolutely. I, a second story came to my mind, you know, to be honest, I had a fallback 
Do you call it a fallback when you fall back in your old uh, yes. uh, energy? Yeah, a fallback. I guess it was, I was the second year in the island. So 12, 13 years ago, I went to a concert, a new age concert. It was Deva uh, Primal and Mitten. So it's a, so kind of new, they call it new age music, you know, yoga music in, 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 a, in a nice venue in, in Palma de Mallorca in Spain. You know, there were all these yoga people, mostly women, all these yoga people in this concert hall. I don't know, 600, 800 people, something like that. So I, I took my seat and on together with my former wife and uh, I came to sit on the right side. There was a little man sitting, you know, there were fingers, uh, small fingers, little fingers like this. And, you know, you look like somebody who just came up from the mountain, down from the mountain, a, a farmer in the mountain or something like that. So, well, to be honest, I was thinking, oh, fuck, what is this guy doing here? He doesn't fit into this, you know, new age, everybody styled, flexible, <laughs> eating healthy thing and so and then the show went on so the show started and and the guys on the stage performed uh, their amazing uh music you know i don't know if you know david primal meeting meeting was a uh, uh, band member of uh oh my god was a very famous rock band maybe get the name i'll get the name later anyway anyway and and he uh in an ashram in, with Osho, he met this, uh, this German girl many, many years ago, and they're now doing new age music. Beautiful music, by the way. And so the, the, they started, you know, the, the, the show started. And the guy be, beside me, he was singing in an amazing voice. Not just the, the voice was amazing, but he knew every mantra by heart. So he was so engaged with the music. So he was so prepared. And and in, 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 the, in the break, I, I, I said to him, hey, what are you doing? He said, yeah, I'm a farmer in the, in the north part of the island. But three times a, a week, I practice yoga and I love to sing mantras. And I said to myself, oh, Roland, another lesson for you. Why did you pre-charge? <laughs> <laughs> did you tell him? Did you let to him be know honest, that? no, no. To be honest, I was so ashamed. To be honest, no, I didn't. I didn't. I was so ashamed. But we we, we came. We, we we went in contact. We practiced yoga several times. I, I, I never told him, but I, I, I was ashamed. <laughs> I was absolutely ashamed. Well, thanks for your honesty about that. And I, I just think also when it comes to yoga, yoga is the great foundation. It's almost like there are people from all walks of life all ages and when you practice yoga you're all the same it's so cool and it's it's also interesting when we think about sports you know you have people from all different backgrounds who are on a sports team and we watch the team and everyone's cheering and yay we're all into it but then when it comes to individuals we're kind of like oh she's different he's different but those same two people could be on that sports team that we're watching whatever it is tennis match and we think they're really cool. What do you think that's about? Uh, absolutely. You know, I have to say, I, I make the same experience when, when I'm traveling in my motorhome, you know. I spend, uh, I, I guess, almost three weeks on a beautiful beach in France. And we've been different motorhomes. And there are people just having a tent on the roof of their, of their normal car. There are young people uh, who cannot afford a luxury home like myself. They have very, very old women, you know, a little a bed inside, no shower, no toilet. Different. So, but we, at the end, we are all campers and, and on surface, by the way. Yeah. So we all have the same hobby. We we enjoy traveling. We enjoy connecting. I was I don't know if you saw the picture on, on, on Facebook. I was cooking for eight adults and five kids, and people came around. So we are all the same, different backgrounds maybe different financial opportunities, different camping, cars, tents, whatever, but we all love the same freedom, adventure, nature. And this is what's connecting. And it doesn't matter if you have a luxury one or, or a simple one, it doesn't matter. We all love the same stuff. And, and as you said, it's the same in sport or in, in music is something that connects very people, yoga, whatever it is. Uh, but. Actually, well, well I, I guess I learned two main lessons according to this topic. One lesson is, I guess it was, maybe it was the Dalai Lama, I don't remember, who said, when you speak, when you talk, you just repeat what you already know. But when you listen carefully to other person, then there's a chance that you learn something new. And the same for me is when you always meet the same people, it's nice. Maybe you are the hero in, in this group, yes. Yeah, but don't learn something new because everyone is the same of you. Everybody has the same 
uh, point of view is effective. But when you meet other people, different people, people with a different background, you can learn something new and maybe you learn something new about yourself. It's a huge opportunity. Go for it. Don't be afraid. Go for it. And I, I, you know, when you go on a party or something, maybe when you come the first time to a venue, you don't know anyone there. Uh, I can tell you, you, I guess you won't be the, the only one. There are always a, a, a few people who just came to this venue, to this event the first time. And they're all afraid of starting communication. So just go there, introduce yourself and start communication. Uh, and you, you never you never know who you're going to meet. You never, never know. You never know. I met so many amazing people. And to be honest, I, I met people who really dressed very simple, and especially when you travel to India or other places. And then when you come in a conversation, hey, hey, wow, he's the CEO of this company. He's this, he's that, she's this, she's that. You never know how you're going to meet. You never know. All good points, Roland. Thank you. And I want to take it back to the book. So when we, we look at the cover, and of course, everyone doesn't know what the story is because the book hasn't been published, although it's finished, it will be released November 26th, is that the, the animals living in the forest, the ones on the one side of the fence, they live in the forest together, but don't really know each other. And then something happens in this book where they actually have to come together and they learn about each of their skills that they have as a panther for example as a boo so it's really kind of cool because the point going back to people is we think we know people but we don't know everything you can know someone for a lifetime and still not know anything it's it's really interesting tell us a little bit about a boo the panther and how you relate to a boo what traits about okay. Abu represent you? Okay. Well, first of all, I choose the panther, the black panther, because it's my totem, my, my, my how to say, my spirit animal. I have a, a huge tattoo on my left chest, it's a panther, a panther head. I love panthers. It's, it's uh, besides other animals, it's, it's my, my spirit animal. I had an amazing opportunity many, many years ago. And so since this is my spirit, I love, I love a black panther. That's one. Abu, uh, uh, Abu is is uh, the meaning of Abu is in different languages uh, in some Arab countries, but in, in Africa, in Swahili, in other low languages, Abu means grandfather, the wise man, grandfather. So I thought it's it's nice to bring a, a wise person, a, a wise character, a wise animal, into this book who who yeah teaches the others a little bit about about life and i think it's so so important that we also listen to all the people because you know everything is now so fancy our technology everything is young hipster modern and but i think we never should forget that we also listen to the elders because we can learn so much from them they know to listen uh they know to communicate uh and so yeah that's why, that's why i choose the character the Black Panther and the Boo, because it's so, so important that we don't forget the elders. They know the stories. Uh, and it's it's not all about technology. It's not all about having the, uh, the newest gadgets. It's more about connecting and communicating with others. That's, what, that's why the Panther is there. Excellent. Thank you. And you and I are almost the same age. I'm a little bit older than you. I'm 59 and a half. So, uh, but growing but up, you look, but you look much better than me. <laughs> no, thank you. You look pretty darn good. Uh, I remember growing up, people would say, respect your elders, respect your elders. And we did. And if you were to go on a sales call and you met with, at the time, it was pretty much white male in, uh, in corporate America, and it could be 50, 60, 70 years old, and you would show that person respect. And then somewhere in the middle of my career, I would go on sales calls and the VP of sales was in his 20s or it was a 30 year old. And you'd have the 70 year olds with the 30 year olds. And then instead of typing these long emails with a lot of big words, we're supposed to text or, you know, I was told whatever your content is you want to send me, make sure it fits in a Twitter feed. So however many characters that is. And it seemed like the respect for the elders sort of diminished. And it was kind of like, no, we need to really integrate all the generations together. And if you're a traditionalist or a boomer, it's not as 
revered as it used to be. And so I feel like that's coming back around now. What are your thoughts? Well, absolutely. I don't know the situation in the U.S., but what we have here in Europe is more and more residences um, where not only the elderly live together or, or the kids bring them there that they don't disturb you in your job. So we have more and more communities uh, where the elders share uh, houses with younger people and they learn and integrate from us. So the, uh, I don't know this old lady, for example, lives there, is taking care about the kids from from a young lady, which is not her daughter. They are not even uh, relatives. Yeah? So it's it's coming more and more that elder people start living together with, with younger people. So younger people who are far away from their parents, so they have nobody to take care about the kids. Elder people who are alone because maybe their kids are far away or they don't have kids or already passed away. So it's more and more that um, different generations uh, share a roof in, in, in different forms of, of living together. It's, it's coming more and more and more. That's what I see. And what I also see, especially in, in startup, uh, a business perspective, that startup companies, mostly, you know, they're students. Um, so the most startup companies I'm working with uh, have a technology background. So they're just fresh from university. They have a good idea to bring a product to the market, but they have no sales or management, leadership, process, HR experience at all. And they bring all the men in. Uh, not all their strategies, but all the men who are experienced, but also have know the new way of working and the new way of, of, of selling and it's coming. It's, it's more and more. Absolutely. Yes. But it could be much more. And and, and I learned so much, you know, I, I mentioned it before. I have been spending the last 14 years in Mallorca, in, in Spain and the southern of Europe, and especially in the south of Europe, like in Spain, France, Italy, Greece, Turkey. More and more generations lives together. And when you go on, on, a, on, a, on a festival, on a small on, on an event in, in a small village, you have many, many generations celebrating together, dancing, uh, late night, small kids, old, old people, all together. And I always loved it. I always loved it, especially, you know, in, 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 in Austria, in Germany, in, in the UK, um, and I guess in the US where you're very, very success driven and money driven. The young people, the small, get into kindergarten, do not disturbing the, the career of the parents. And the elders, the parents, the grandparents, they go in a residence, so they're not disturbing their career. And I think this is not a good trend. And we have to, to, yeah, to, to bring back these families who are open to it, who are open to it, to live with, uh, as I said, under roof, different generations, and learn from each other and support from each other. Absolutely. It's coming more. It's coming more. But it, there's, but it could be more. Yeah, absolutely. And I think during the pandemic, we saw a lot more of this. People were really forced to come together for various reasons. And that sense of family and that sense of community has been really empowered. And I feel like what you and I discuss so often about the power of listening and the power of effective communication, when you have that group of people around you, your inner circle that you really can trust, that you can, you can actually work on your effective listening skills because uh, we develop patterns with one another when we're close to each other and we're in the same household. And sometimes those patterns are dysfunctional, but when we're aware of it, then we can actually bring generations together by being a really good listener. Absolutely. And, and I want to challenge our audience, you know, uh, like Jacqueline. So wherever you are joining us, the next time you get in a conversation, maybe with your partner at home, with your kids, in the job or in the gym or wherever, it doesn't matter. When, some, when you start a communication and somebody talks to you, how many seconds do you need to start judging? How many seconds? How fast are you in charging? And when you are aware of charging, stop this process and go back to listening and just listen and listen and listen. Because when you start charging, uh, you don't listen anymore. And when you don't listen anymore, you don't understand the other person. And maybe the other person is not so far away from you, from yourself. That's really a challenge. Show. That's what I did in the past. I always, um, I say, I always observed myself, and I got into a conversation. How quick am I in charging? And why do I charge? And stop it and, and go back to, to listening. Really, try it out. It's an amazing experience. Try it out. How often we really charge? 
So true. And that's what happens in this book. In the book, the animals start judging one another and stop listening. And that's what I want children and their families, their custodians or caregivers, whomever it is that is reading the book to them or with them to really take away that to your point, it happens in a split second. Someone says one word and all of a sudden you're judging them. Oh, he thinks this, or he believes in that. And then you're not listening. Why am I friends with him? I don't know. He felt that way, right? It happens all the time. We look like we're listening, but it, we're in our minds and we're no longer present. And I feel like that's so much of what goes on in the world, regardless of where you live, where whatever it is you do, that instead of truly giving someone a safe space to share, we're in our mind judging them or providing a solution. How often does that happen? Someone's telling you a story and you give them a solution. They didn't ask you for a solution. They just asked you to listen. And then, then they're annoyed that you don't want to listen to their advice. And then they're like, oh, well, fine. If you don't want to listen to what I have to say. Well, no, I wanted you to listen. That's all. And this happens in relationships. Not the, the man comes home, they're typically, really. It's, it's, it happens to me, too, in the past. And sometimes still, too. Man is coming home. The, the wife is coming home. She tells something, a, a challenge in the job. And the man starts immediately bring up a solution and 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 then the uh, the, the, the girlfriend or the, or the wife is pissed off yeah because she doesn't ask for a solution the only thing you want she wants to listen and understand and maybe hug her nothing more no solution so man if you're if you're a, a man out there if your girl comes to you and she has a problem start listening hug her and when she want, when she wants an advice a solution she will tell you but don't start before just hug hug and listen <laughs> Good points. Uh, I have to admit that when I was married way back in the dark ages, when, and I always had a career, so I was always working, but I worked from home and my ex-husband came home that I immediately was all over him. How was your day? What's new? What's going on? How can I help? And he was like, whoa, I just need some time. So we actually went to marriage counseling. And what I learned was give them 30 minutes, give them 45 minutes to come in, decompress. And, and so that's kind of like setting a boundary, which also works. If someone's highly agitated or very emotional and you want to come to them with whatever it is, do you think they're really going to be able to listen to you? Not at all. Not at all. You have to come down, give them some time, give them some time. I want to answer something like Jackie. What, what, what I learned from the Buddhist tradition, I'm not a Buddhist, I'm more a seeker in, in different tradition. And what I learned from the Buddhist uh, tradition is everything is neutral. So when you see something, when you experience something, it's your perception. But when you see something, somebody talks negative to you or something does wrong, this is your perception. Maybe another person sees this event totally different. And maybe another person thinks, no, that's the most lovely person I ever met. So it's just, everything is neutral. Everything is neutral. It's just what you make out of it. It's just your perception. And what I learned in, 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 in LNP is perception is proje projection. Yeah? And it's mostly, it's not the other person. I really, I learned this in my, 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 my last relationship. You know, I was, when I was pissed off about her, uh, I found out, oh, what I, what I didn't like, what she's doing or her attitude, it was what, what was my pain, what, what I didn't like on myself. Yeah. Perception is projection. Yeah. And, yeah. and everything is everything is neutral. Everything is neutral. I think those are great points. And it also reminds me of triggers. Certain things trigger us and people know that they, it triggers us because we've been with them and they know how to, to play our button, so to speak. And <laughs> I... I've shared this before, but just very quickly, I was at the gym a couple of weeks ago, this happened, and there's a certain room in the back that's just a floor with TRXs, and you can do whatever you want back there, and that's where I always go, and there was nobody there. I was so excited, the whole thing myself, walking lunges. Anyway, this person comes in, and she's on her phone on the speaker. Now, there are signs everywhere, no cell phone use, but you know, I guess people feel like it doesn't apply to them, so she decides to set up like she actually had a, a, an external speaker that she set up so that she could have this business conversation while she was working out. 
And I felt myself immediately starting to get triggered because I don't understand how people think that a public space is their individual office. So I said to myself, I'm not going here. I'm just going to keep doing my workout. I'm going to jump rope faster, harder, do some more push, like whatever, so that I can just get it out of my mind. But yet it wasn't getting out of my mind. And I was starting to get really upset. So I thought, well, I could give her the dirty eye, you know, that evil look like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so she never looked at me. And long story short, I said to myself, you're the one who's losing out on this because she's doing what she wants to do, whether she's permitted to do it or not, she's doing it and it's affecting you. So I said to myself, you need to just tune her out, work really hard mentally to focus on what you're doing. And that's what I did, but I let it get the best of me for about five or 10 minutes. Yeah. This is the lesson, you know, this is what I learned from one of my yoga teachers many, many years ago. He said, you know, sitting in silent alone in a room and staring at a candle, this is an easy, this is not meditation, but what you have to do is go on a crossroad where there's a lot of traffic, a lot of noise, and then sit down and do meditation and don't be distracted by the noise around, then meditation starts. And this is what I learned. And, and so I can really, uh, how to say, filter, filter out uh, distraction. It's so important. Or another uh, uh, thing is when you have a partner snoring, uh, the more you upset, the less you can sleep because it's not the snoring that disturbs you. It's what's going on in your mind. What, 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 what's going on in your mindset? So actually, when my part, my, my former partner, when she was, I, I just love it. I just I, I listen to it. For me, it was music. But I learned when somebody snores, when I get upset, I can't sleep because I'm upset. It's not that I can't sleep because the other person is snoring. It's because what's going on. Everybody call it the mind fuck. But what's, what's going on? That's, so, so learn to not get distracted because it, as soon as as soon as you how to say it, as soon as you get triggered and triggered means somebody pushes a button and you open the door when somebody pushes the button don't open the door stay focused it's all about you it's all about you it's not i, I don't say that it's an easy exercise needed practice but it's all about practicing practice that, that's what i learned in yoga uh meditate on a, on a crossroad where there's a lot of traffic yeah, that, that's a really good thought-provoking idea. It makes a lot of sense. You're by yourself. It's going to be easy when there's all these distractions. Will you succumb to the distractions just like you were talking about snoring? So I, I think that's a really good one. Anybody who's out there with somebody who's snoring, think about that the next time. Why is it that you're really getting upset? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Roland, absolutely. we have our next show coming up and a special yes. guest coming back. Tell our audience about that. Ah, in the Mallorca. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. Actually, we did it in the beginning of March. I had, he's one of my teachers, uh, Dr. Cherry Armstrong. I am, he's highly, highly reputed in all over the world as the Western master of the Eastern wisdom. Even, I guess, the, the Indian government always gives him awards. He's really, really into his Sanskrit, into yoga. I say the real yoga, no, not the fancy stuff with the modern clothes and the stretchy, stretchy girl. That's not yoga. Uh, but my, my teacher said, um, yoga is an inner process. The other thing is just a circus. So we, we, we will have Dr. Jeffrey Armstrong back on the show. I'm very looking forward to that. And he really has a lot of wisdom about yoga philosophy. He did, uh, he just published a new book. He did a new translation on the Bhagavad Gita. It is not influenced by our Christian background. He does it very neutral. And uh, so I love this book. And here's a lot of wisdom, what we can learn. And we will uh, focus uh, on this uh, interview or on this conversation about how a yogic way can help you to cope with the challenges that we are facing today. That's going to be the topic. Brilliant. Thank you, Roland. And for people who would like to reach out to you, they want to hire you, they want to work with you, they want to join your men's group, what's the best way for people to connect? If you want to come with me, the best way thing is uh, go to my, my website. I have different websites, like seven or eight, because I'm different topics. Uh, so the best way to, to get in contact with me, go on, I always call it my main website, which is my name, rolandfriedel.com. I will spell it for you. It's R-O-L-A-N-D-F-R-I-E-D-L, rolandfriedel.com. So you get to know it. You have a contact form. You can, and if you're interested in more in the business topics, what we, we do with my with my company, we how we support uh, entrepreneurs, 
uh, and organization, then you can l get a link on the SPS website. If you want to learn more about the men's work, you go there. If you want to have a wireless life style, what I call meaning combining traveling and working, go on wireless life rocks. Yeah, who contacted whoever wants to? What's going I'm, I'm very open. I, I love to connect with people, I love to share and care, and it's all about sharing knowledge. And that's one of the reasons why I really spend a lot of time on USA Global TV and really, besides my, my full schedule, is because I just love it. Uh, connect with people, it's it's connecting, it's networking. Uh, yeah, get to know it's it's not about it's not always that uh, that you have to call me because I you want to be have a, a problem solved or fix something. Maybe you just want to uh, talk to me. It's cool. I love to. I'm curious about people. And if you have a problem, if you have a pain, you're more than welcome to. Fantastic. Please do reach out to Roland. He's been a great mentor and friend to me. And I've asked him to reach out to a couple of people and he has, and they've had really great things to say about him. So thank you again, Roland. And I look forward to seeing you shortly on the other show. Thank you for inviting me and for, thank you to be proud of this book. I just love it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye. Uh, Thank you to each and every one of you. As I always say that if it weren't for you, we wouldn't keep growing the way that we are. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't been there yet, there's so much that we offer. There's 29 live shows each and every week. Our YouTube channel is USA Global TV and Radio. And if you would like to learn how to listen at an elevated level, if you're having challenges in your relationship, in your work, and you feel that you're not being heard, or you feel that you have something to learn when it comes to being an elevated listener, please reach out to me. I'm a certified coach. I'm the listening mentor. And if you're interested, you can take the power of listening. It's a $257 course that I'm offering for $30 for anyone and everyone who is a fan of our shows on our platform. You can find out more in the comments there in the chat. You can also go over to our website, which is usaglobaltv.com. You can look up education, or you can go to my other website, drjacqueline.com, and you can also go to courses. We're coming out with a brand new website, The Elevated Listeners, and that will feature our team of certified elevated listeners. So there's so many now, there'll be one place where you can go get to know them, and get yourself on there, get yourself certified so we can promote you as somebody who really cares about listening at an elevated level. All right, thank you so much. I'm gonna go over to the other studio for the Mallorca Connection. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now.